Lord be with you. Welcome everyone to our Sunday morning worship on the second beautiful day in a row. It, uh, everything looks great, smells great outside, so I hope everyone has the time to get out and enjoy it today. I have just a couple of announcements I'd like to briefly make this morning. The first one, Vacation Land Voices. It's a North Woods Community Choral Group. They're going to be performing Wednesday evening, this week, August 2nd at 7 p.m. Uh, that will be at the Northland Pines Auditorium. So, and of course, it is a benefit, so all donations, they have three, ba three local charities that these things will be, that all donations will be going to. So if you are so moved by the Spirit, I'm sure it is going to be well worth the trip. Again, that's Wednesday evening, the 2nd at 7 p.m., Northland Pines Auditorium. The second announcement I have this morning uh, really is just a brief recap of yesterday. Uh, that was our uh, pie and ice cream event for the summer. Uh, lots of help, lots of fun, lots of good food, some leftovers, okay? So there will be some of that, and most certainly part of those leftovers are homemade pies. We have, we have pie this morning. So I'm encouraging everyone to please join us for coffee after the worship service. But it was a wonderful day. We got to see a good many folks, people that look forward to coming up to this benefit every year. They plan their weekends up north around it. And uh, it was just a really, really good day. And I want to thank everyone that baked, everyone that cooked, everyone that helped, and everyone that donated, and just everyone that came. It made the day complete. So thank you all very much. That's all the announcements I have for today. If you are visiting with us today, everything that you need for worship you were given as you entered the church, as you entered the narthex. It is all there in order, and it also doubles as our bulletin, including uh, next week's verses, prayer concerns, that sort of thing. And if there's something there that you wish to, for whatever reason, you wish to take the worship guide home, I encourage you to do so. We reprint these every week. Uh, so, again, this is something that you can take with you as we simply recycle them. Also, when we gather on Sunday, or whenever we gather, actually, we celebrate the Lord's Supper. And today is no exception. We will be celebrating the Lord's Supper. We want you to know that if you're visiting, you are welcome to the Lord's table here. We will commune one half the church at a time. Simply come forward. You will receive the host from me. And then moving left or right, whichever is appropriate, you will receive the wine by either dipping the host into the wine, thereby receiving both elements at the same time, and or receive the wine by individual glass. And if you do by individual glass, you will notice on each side of the sanctuary there is a waste bin for your glass. If you are in need of an alternative, there is grape juice in the small glasses that is clearly marked, and there's also grape juice in the small chamber, two chambers, but the small chamber of the chalice, is also grape juice, and if you have need of gluten-free host, you simply ask for those as you come forward. I have them as well. But the emphasis is we celebrate the Lord's Supper. You are welcome to celebrate the Lord's Supper with us. That being all I have for everyone this morning, let's prepare our hearts and minds to worship a gracious and loving God. We begin our worship this day in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin 
and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our gathering song this morning, O Worship the King, ELW 842, and I invite you to stand as you are coming.
sovereign God, through the death and resurrection of your Son, you bring us into your kingdom of grace and mercy. By your Spirit, give us your wisdom, that we may treasure the life that comes from Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Our first reading is from 1 Kings chapter 3, verses 5 through 12. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I should give you. And Solomon said, You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant, my father David, because he walked before you in faithfulness in righteousness and in uprightness of heart toward you. And you have kept for him this great and steadfast love and have given him a son to sit by his throne today. And now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David, although I am only a little child. I do not know how to go out or to come in. And your servant is in the midst of the people whom you, have made, who, whom you have chosen, a great people, so numerous that they cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, able to discern between good and evil. For who can govern this, your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. God said to him, because you have asked this and have not asked for yourself long life or riches or for the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right, I now do according to your word. Indeed, I give you a wise and discerning mind. No one like you has been before you and no one like you shall arise after you. The word of the Lord. Please join me in reading responsively Psalm 119, found on page 9 of your bulletin. Your decrees are wonderful, therefore I obey them with all my heart. I open my mouth and pant because I long for your commandments. Order my footsteps in your word. Let no iniquity have dominion over me. Let your face shine upon your servant and teach me your statutes. Our second reading is from the book of Romans, chapter 8, verses 26 through 39. The Spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very, inter that very Spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is in, is in the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his Son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined he also called, and those whom he called, he also justified, and those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? 
It is God who justifies, who is to condemn. It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all day long. We are, we are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. The word of the Lord. <clears throat> Please stand as you are comfortable for the gospel acclamation. Christmas and different times of the year, we always have those things that we grew up with that we watch that kind of help round out the feeling of the season, all right? Well, we've got a tradition in our house that the week of St. Patty's Day, and I should make clear, I'm not Irish, we watch every year 
the quiet man. Now, if you don't know what that is, that was one of the first non-Western movies that John Wayne made. He was very young in that one. Marie O'Hara played with him. Ultimately, in the end of the movie, he became his wife. One of the scenes in the movie caught, always caught me, and that was, was that in that time and that age in Ireland, when you got married, there was a dowry that came with the wife. And that came in the form of some type of monetary amount and possessions held on to the family, in this case, for hundreds of years. These were her treasures, cradles, uh, something that resembled a piano, but was far before the piano. And it was these things that she had in a special room and that she cherished. Well, of course, you know, there's always got to be controversy in every one of John Wayne's movies, so that popped up. And they ended up the end of their wedding day with none of it. And she declared that until that dowry is here, I am no married woman. That's how important those things were to her. Now, I would counsel her today that she probably had her priorities a little out of order. Uh, but nonetheless, when you stop and think about it, we too are a little bit that way, maybe even some more than others. When I think back and I look at the things that I have of my mother and father. There's a part of me that wishes I could tell you I have more. And then there's also a part of me that's thankful that I haven't latched on to a lot of material things as family treasures. But you know, there are a few. There are a few that I look forward to the day that they get handed down to my children. My mother, mom, I have a very, very, very inexpensive coffee mug it was the one she always served coffee when I came to visit her after I got married. And I don't know how I, I know how I ended up with it. I had a half a cup of coffee one day, had to leave for work, and she says, oh, take it along with you and bring it back next time. Well, it stayed at my house. So I have just this one coffee mug from my mom. The other thing back in the day that she, that she put together, and she took years of love putting together, was the Christmas crash set. And she began pulling all this together when the, when the little figurines, they weren't plastic. They were porcelain. And at one time, she had well over 100 pieces in this thing where it would take up an entire, some furniture top to put out the manger and the shepherds and the wise men and, all, and then all the sheep along with the shepherd. And we have scaled that down to get it back to about the original size that that was something that was given to me of my mom. So those are the simple treasures that I have of mom. Dad, probably even less. But a couple of things, you know, we love the outdoors, Dad and I. He taught me to hunt, he taught me to fish, and I have very fond memories with all of that. I still have a fishing reel that he bought from the local hardware store, and I remember how old I was. I was eight years old. I'm still using that fishing reel. I don't know if it'll make it to John, but I'm still using that fishing reel. He bought a hunting knife there. And the only reason I bring that up is because since the day he bought it, neither he nor I have ever been able to get it sharp. It's made of German steel, and it's the hardest thing I've ever seen, and I've never been able to put an edge on it. But I keep it around because it's dad. And someday it will be Christie or John. That's just it. It's just those few things, those few treasures that you get to pass on. And the problem with these treasures is this. Someday they won't be there either. Time will consume them sooner or later where they will belong to someone else, unfortunately probably end up somewhere in a landfill and or just slip into mediocrity and just not mean anything to anybody. But those are the things that as people we tend to hold as treasure. Well, today I'm here to tell you a little different story about what God holds as treasure. When he tells us in the parable that a man that found a treasure in the field hid it again 
until he had the wealth to buy the field. When we read the parable of the merchant searching for fine pearls that found one of great value, and by the way, it doesn't say that the pearl was worth everything he had, but he sold everything he had to buy it nonetheless. We always think of these things as us finding the treasure, as us finding the pearl, as us purchasing these things. And the problem with looking at the parable in that type of way is that there isn't anything we can find on our own. There isn't anything that deals with the kingdom of heaven that we can purchase on our own. That the human existence and the brokenness in man does not allow us to do that. This parable today, just for today, isn't about what we're supposed to go find, what we're supposed to buy, but what God bought for you and I through his son. And that kingdom, that treasure, that special gift, the thing that was worth sending his son to die is you. You're the treasure. You are the treasure that was God held in the Garden of Eden and that fell and he hid it in the earth until the right time to buy the field. You are the pearl. Not knowing whether or not we are worth all that he gave, he gave it nonetheless. You are that precious gift. You are the kingdom of heaven. And this is what God did for us. And it's important to remember this. If God does something, it stays. It sticks. It does not recede. It does not fade away. It is there, and it's always there, and it's always there for you and I. If I have anything to do with this treasure, with the purchase of this treasure, with the finding of this treasure, I will find a way to mess it up. It's just that simple. And yet this is God saying that you were worth it. You were worth it. So I paid the price. I paid the price. And you are precious in his sight. And as Paul tells us that in and with the love of Christ, there isn't anything in this world that can separate us from the love of God in Christ. Nothing. And this is the treasure that we are, but not only the treasure we're told to share and we're asked to add to. These are the types of things that we can hand on to our children and our friends and our nieces, our nephews, the world. Because it's eternal. It's solid. It's permanent. It never goes away, and it's a gift that will never, ever, ever slip into mediocrity. God has chosen each and every one of you that are here today and each and every one that may even be watching at home. You're chosen. You're saved by God's grace through his Son. And that's the treasure in the field, the treasure that can never, ever, ever perish, the treasure that will never end up in a landfill because you were that important to him. You were loved that much by him. And it's that very message that we are to carry in us through every day of our lives and that blessed gift and that treasure that we share with each and every person out that door. This isn't about working to get it done. This is him doing it out of love for his creation, for you. You are the treasure. Broken, at times sinful, at least me. I'll speak for one. But saved because he chose to buy that field. He chose to secure that treasure. He chose to grab hold of that pearl. And all of those things are you. Live in that love. Live in that grace. 
go forth and add to the treasure. Amen. Our hymn of the day, Be Thou My Vision, ELW 793, and I invite you to stand as you are comfortable. Join in reciting the Apostles' Creed found on page 14. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the church, for the world, and for all who are in need. Each petition will end with, Lord, in your mercy. Please respond with, hear our prayer. Gracious God, guide us, your church, with your counsel and strengthen our hearts for service. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Restore polluted air and waters, protect animal habitats, and send new growth where it is needed. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Give aid and comfort to all struggling and grieving in Kentucky because of the flooding. Sustain them in their loss. Lord, in your mercy. Protect threatened people in Taiwan and in the Ukraine. Lord, in your mercy. Give patience to those who suffer. Relieve those who are in pain and heal the sick. 
We now bring before you the names of those on our hearts, whether aloud or silently. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. inspire our congregation to live in the present and to trust in you. Give us flexibility to follow where you lead. Lord, in your mercy, Hear our prayer. we give thanks for those who have died recently and across the ages. We rejoice in the sure hope of the resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, we lift our prayers to you, O God, trusting in your promise to hear us through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. I invite you to share the peace. Lord's peace, everyone.
your heart. Give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, gracious Father, with this bread and cup, we remember the life of our Lord offered for us, and believing the witness of his resurrection, we await his coming in power to share with us the grace and promised peace. Send now, we pray, your Holy Spirit, the Spirit of our Lord and of his resurrection, that we who receive the Lord's body and blood may live to the praise of your glory and receive our inheritance with all your saints in life. Join our prayers with those of your servants of every time and every place, and unite them with the ceaseless petitions of our great high priest until he comes as victorious Lord of all. Amen. Lord Jesus, remember us in your kingdom. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he returns. All has been made ready. All are welcome. Our Lord and Savior invites us to come. Please be seated.
heaven and earth, where hunger and thirst are no more, send us from this table as witnesses to the resurrection, that through our lives all may know life in Jesus' name. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. Amen. Our sending him for the day, go, who stretched the spangled, God who stretched the spangled heavens. Let's try that. ELW 771. serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.